in my fifth point. On the basis of that, we have a properly basic belief in the existence of God and the truth of Christianity. But when it comes to showing someone else that what we know through the witness of the Holy Spirit is true, here we appeal to argument and evidence as I've done tonight. And the arguments and evidence that I've appealed to are largely deductive arguments. This isn't retrospective evidentialism. These are deductive arguments. If the premises are true, then you cannot deny the conclusion on pain of irrationality because the conclusions follow with logical necessity from the premises. So the only way to deny the conclusion is you've got to show me which of the premises are false. That's why you've got that program insert with the premises in your program for these arguments. Doc, or Mr. Hitchens needs to identify which premises of the argument he rejects as false if he's to reject the conclusions. Now with respect to my cosmological argument, notice that he didn't dispute whatever begins to exist has a cause, nor did he dispute the philosophical and scientific arguments for the beginning of the universe. All he asked was the question, was there pre-existent material? The answer is no, there was not. As Barrow and Tipler point out, at this singularity, space and time came into existence. Literally nothing existed before the singularity. So if the universe originated at such a singularity, we would truly have a creation ex nihilo, that is out of nothing. And this isn't talking religion, folks. This is talking contemporary cosmology. So the first argument, it seems to me, is unrefuted. What about the fine-tuning argument? Um, here he said, well, scientists are terribly uncertain about the fine-tuning argument. Well, I think that's simply not the case. Uh, Sir Martin Rees, uh, the Royal Astro Astronomer Royal of Great Britain, has said, the laws governing our universe appear to be far